feel free to say whatever it is that you want to say. Fuck you. What have I done? Uh, I don't know. I just wanted to say something obscene. Did you say we started recording? You, you, yeah, you've you've lost your edge now, haven't you? <laughs> Fuck you is the is one of the least <laughs> obscene things you've ever said. Yeah, it was. Man. Hmm. I'm in a bad I'm in a bad state. Have you just been just been bad in general? No, I I just uh I'm just quite sleepy. Fair. So no, not been getting enough sleep, Adam. Not yeah. Enough sleep. Yeah, you need to do I, I'm, I told Charlie earlier that I was gonna shout at him if he didn't get enough sleep. I'm gonna have to extend that to you as well, and I'm gonna have to start shouting at people who aren't sleeping enough. <laughs> like, gotta fucking sleep. Go to bed. I have yeah. to do it to, to my, my housemate as well sometimes. The second it gets two o'clock in the morning, I'm like, why are you still up? You've got work in the morning. Go to fucking bed. Whereas for once, I'm actually alright, actually. Yeah, for once you're alright. You're alright, you're alright. You sound it's awake. Rare. You sound more awake. I, I, I feel relatively awake. Hmm. Emphasis on the relatively, but I feel relatively awake. You How know? has it been done for your, your general uh, energy levels, right? Well, I've had the coronavirus at the same time. So mm-hmm. that's kind of, that, that's <laughs> the the energy problem. levels in general quite bad. Yeah. Uh, I did. Uh, I did get. So, I, I, so I've been waking up to do like streams mm. for like West Ham stuff and then basically spending the rest of the day in bed. And Jesus. if I didn't have to do a stream, spending almost all of it in bed. Yeah. But I did a stream the other night, and I did something so stupid, and I watched it back. Oh, no. And as I was sat laughing at it, I did get so, so lightheaded, I almost fainted, which was fun. <laughs> um, so Christ. in general, I feel like my energy level is not, represented, not representative of how it would be in the future. No. That's in, you're hoping that it improves. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Once when you're no yeah, longer like ill, I'm, like I'm on the back side of the illness now. <laughs> Bum jokes, and <laughs> hopefully, once this it's bunned off properly, I'll be able to mm. fully utilize my added energy levels to mm. good use. Sounds like a um, sounds like a plan. That's the aim. That the is aim. A, it's a good aim. It's a good aim. I've been sleeping all, all right. right recently. I've been I've been I've, I've been on it to be fair. Sleeping wise, I'm I'm not too bad. I uh, I managed it. I, I used to be really, really bad in terms of sleep. I used to just like sleep all day, then sleep all night, <laughs> and then not be awake for any of it, um, and then be like awake for a long time. You know, it, it just fucking it, it fucks it fucks you up. We've gotten to that age now where you need you need proper sleep. You know what? I've uh, it's just something I had a conversation with my girlfriend about the other day. Mm. I've started playing. Uh, in my sort of half ill state recently and in since December, um I was playing Batman Arkham Asylum again. Oh, interesting. Um and there's like a bunch of like there's like a challenge mode in it. So I was getting the mm. platinum trophy, so I was doing all the challenges. Mm. And in the challenge mode, some of it is like the fighting segments. Sure. So you go against four waves of enemies of increasing difficulty. And like I ha- I have the platinum trophy for the PS three version for when the game originally came out mm. but i really love that game and i wanted to get it again just because i was really enjoying playing it, and was so it asylum or city did you say asylum asylum, 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 asylum asylum which i think is better than city i think asylum is a better one as well yeah people tell me i'm wrong they're wrong um yeah, they are wrong. they don't they don't appre- it's because they don't appreciate a tailored experience and instead they appreciate open world sandboxes I like that's what I like about yeah. Arkham Asylum. I like it small, like nature. I, yeah, I, I like it. it's like it's like this dense, tightly packed. Yeah. It's a Metroidvania. It's a Metroidvania. It's, dense, yeah. nice, it's just so nice. Like, and mm. it's not. I'm not saying Arkham City's bad. I love no. Arkham City. Arkham but... City's really good. It just it's more open, and therefore I feel like the game suffers because of it being more open. Yeah, I think there's not as much. Uh... I don't know. I just think the flow to it sounds great, but um, I'm just. I feel like I'm just old and bad at games now really i don't i don't I, maybe i'm not maybe i'm just maybe i'm just forgetting but in my head mm. i could beat those especially the combat challenges not with relative ease but i feel like i wasn't struggling as much mm. as i was this time and again i wasn't very ill at the time when i was doing it so sure, maybe that that plays probably, too yeah. 
I do feel like I'm worse at games than I was. I don't know. And maybe I it's am. just maybe it's just years of playing Pez taking their toll if I'm not playing specifically Pro Evo twenty twenty one and maybe I'm just lost. But who knows? <laughs> I mean yeah, maybe your all your skills are on, you know, Pro Evo. Yeah, like if you were to That's face it, like yeah. I don't know. Uh I, I, I tried to pull a professional Smash player out of my head and Mango is the only one that came, right? Sure. Like I don't like I'm not like I'm not sure Mango is a professional level at say Pez. No, probably. Do you know not. what I mean? Maybe I'm just maybe I've put all my skill points into Pez. Yeah. And everything. And Mango else put it all in fire. melee and you're like, okay. He's yes. all melee and drinking and you're Pez and not drinking. <laughs> Very difficult skill that not drinking. Yeah. Mark. I mean, it is. You've got to put all your effort into not drinking, right? You know? Yeah. I mean, to be fair, I don't <laughs> because I never started, but other people. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no. So I just feel like I'm worse at games. And then I was playing, I've just started, la... was it last night or the night before? Mm. I started playing um, Horizon Forbidden West. Ah, sure. And uh, the first boss in that just. Just whooped you. I, fe- I felt like I-, I-, I beat it, but I just felt like I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like I didn't really know what was. I was just like, oh, oh, no. Um, oh no. Yeah, so my you gut is I've got worse, beat. but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you have specific. Although, also, you've been ill, so I, you know. I, I, that it does, is also that. There is also that. That does count. That does make a difference. I don't think I've gotten worse at games. I, I, some games, maybe. Because, like, I, I definitely feel like I wouldn't be as good at, like, Smash, for example, or any fighting game. As I used to be, um, because because that's just kind of how fighting games work, right? Your your reflexes dull as you age, and you, uh, you know, things become more difficult, I guess. But I feel yeah. like I'm, I feel like I'm still 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 pretty okay. I I don't I I find find it weird saying like oh I'm good at video games because I don't think I am particularly. I don't think I've ever been particularly like good at video games. Um. But I, I, I don't struggle. I don't struggle with video games on normal mode. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a single game where I'm just like, oh, this is this is too difficult. You know. I mean, you two would probably have it more than me, right? Because you've both played games to some sort of competitive level. Sure. Whereas I, I've never, have just have mm-hmm. never. You know, like you've obviously done like competitive Smash, competitive things. Louis plays Destiny to a competitive level and other stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm like- just. Uh, you know. I don't know. I'm only like um I'm only good at things that uh like I'm only good at very specific things. I'm not like good at games or anything. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't know though. I feel like saying you know, good at games is a very large there's so many games, right? And yeah, I'm probably no, shit I, I feel at like, Dark Souls, I feel, but I, no, I feel like if you if you kinda like good at, at like everything you kind of attempt to throw yourself out that's i guess when you you can say you're uh, you're good at games sure yeah maybe i think i i think my so i think like personally like taking time to self reflect my personal skill is i'm 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 good at adapting to things quite quickly so i think in that sense i'm good at games in that i pick up the controls quite quickly and like I, I understand what the game is trying to make me do, you know, quite quickly and that sort of thing, right? So in terms of like single player games, there's not gonna be a point where I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do this unless it's something really obscure. Um, because I, I I will know how the I will have gotten to grips with the mechanics well enough and and that sort of thing, right? Um, but I don't think like I would say I'm good at like games particularly. I don't know. I feel like I'm shit at Dark Souls, but good at Professor Layton or something. <laughs> so am I still like? good, at prof- good at Professor Layton? What a random pick! <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm just lightning good at specifically puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm shit at puzzles. Just Professor Layton. Um, no, I'm. I'm I, yeah. just the, just the conversations just, in Professor yeah. Layton. I'm really good at pressing the A button. Fantastic. Really... But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I this, I don't I guess it's also I don't play difficult games, though, right? 
unless they're like jrpgs i can play difficult jrpgs because they're not required i, I i'm not required to input anything difficult at that point it's all like it's not execution it's thought process right i guess it's like yeah i don't i don't the only the only tough things i tend to do are in like like trophies really mm. like if it's if it's if there's a game i'm going for trophies then i'll tend to play relatively difficult things whereas if it's not that then i tend to just avoid it you know i'll just i'll play games on whatever the default setting are yeah i've not i've not really touched any of the Soulsborne games into any particular or anything like that mm. you know i'm pretty comfortable where i'm at i guess with that stuff. yeah yeah there, there's like a there's like a, a, a an like a steam achievement that the game gave me recently for uh for destiny mm. for destiny 2 had a look at it and i'm like bro wait why am i getting this now i did this like two years ago i know what it's certainly it's like i'm oh, sorry you first Lou. uh no no i think adam was oh, I, I was asking what the achievement was uh I think. hang on let me have a look at it again i think it's like something with uh, with like doing a doing a raid Mm. You do your first raid, and you're like, "Yeah, I've uh, yeah, I've done over a thousand. <laughs> uh, hang on, I'm actually looking for it now. I forgot what the I forgot what the achievement exactly is. Oh, sorry, I don't really look at my Steam achievements. I should look at my Steam achievements, and I didn't know. I didn't even know Steam had achievements. I'll be honest with you. Like, that's wow, how, that's how little impressive. I, that's how little I've looked at it. Ever. I leave where where even are they? Are they in where are Steam achievements? They're oh, in your yeah. on, oh, on your it's, profile. Uh, complete a complete a <laughs> it was complete a yeah. seal. Complete a seal, there we go. Yeah, that was a, a really dumb that was a really dumb one. Nice. I, I Because oh. because like to so oh, we have to do in the game is to, to, to get a seal is you have to uh there's like a bunch of of like triumphs or other achievements in game that mm. you have to that you have to get in order to uh get this get the the seal quote and um some of them some of them are some of them are like considered hard some of them aren't fair, fair enough but if you complete but if you complete all of them and unlock that specific seal and then you can wear it and then you have that title underneath your name in game as like a bit of purple text. Oh, very nice. Oh my god, Louis! Can I just say, I just clicked on your Steam profile. I just, just, I was just clicking randomly on Steam. Destiny, <laughs> four thousand nine hundred and twelve oh. hours on record. Jesus, oh god. that's a lot. That's a my fair... god, you fiend! That's a fair amount of hours there. You've oh. got to respect it. That's bro. That's like a two year. That's like a two year span as well. I was like, for, I was like twenty, uh, mid twenty twenty onwards. Mid twenty twenty, Jesus! Yeah. It's very impressive. It mid, is impressive. Mid, You're not wrong. Mid twenty twenty. Whereas Any in isolation only point two hours. Disgraceful. Oh. Uh, well, I, I got I got it like, uh, when I when I got a PC because it was on sale for like one pound fifty, but then I realised I've I've already played Isolation like twice before. Don't know if I need to play it. I don't know if I need to play it again. Do what I've uh, I've just been looking at. So I was looking at my Steam achievements, right? And and the one that I've got the most achievements on is uh, Salmon Max Beyond Time and Space. Uh, in, yes, in which means, I've got yeah. seven out yeah, of twelve but, achievements. That that <laughs> game gives you achievements just for beating the levels. But but hold on, Louis. I've got seven. Whoa! I've got seven out of twelve achievements earned on Summer Max Beyond Time and Space on Steam. However, on Xbox, I have twelve out of twelve achievements on Summer Max Beyond Time and Space. You've got. I'm looking at your Steam right now. You've got twenty four out of sixty three achieve. Oh, achievement. Yeah, six twenty four achievements on Neon White. I, I I've done like fairly decent. On, I haven't finished Neon White either. Um, I've done fairly decent on Neon White. Yeah, I'm looking at I them from in terms of like how many like achievement completion. Ah, uh, percentages wise, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That Was makes Neil sense White still kind of up there in terms of? I think it's like fifth, sixth. Oh, 
Well, mm. uh, in Destiny, I have 23 out of 23. Yeah, that's pretty Shocking, good. Shockingly. I have a lot on like the Xbox. I have quite a few achievements that I've like 100%ed on Xbox. Um, yeah. But uh, I haven't got anything on PC. <laughs> Like some of these, some of these are really easy though. Oh my god, reach reach level twenty. That's just literally given to everybody who uh, who installs the game because <laughs> really? that level that level system doesn't exist anymore. So it's just like automatically given to everybody. Nice. I like uh, it. Acquire acquire each Titan subclass. That's another one that's just given because you just uh, same with each warlock and each hunter subclasses. Uh, well, Charlie. You'll be proud mm. of me talking about achievements, um, because I have been uh, I've been playing some PlayStation Four games recently, mm-hmm. uh, and I checked I checked I've been, I've been playing the original Mass Effect um, again because nice. my my friend got a Mass Effect Legendary Edition or whatever it is on um, PS Plus because it's free on PS Plus. Yes, uh, and he was playing it through. He'd never played Mass Effect One before, but he had played two and three. Um, so he thought, crazy, screw it, I'll play through. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's because he never had an Xbox, and he did have a PlayStation, so he kind of never. Okay, that's getting... fair enough. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, the original didn't come out until yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. Uh, so, but I, 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 he started playing. He played all three, and I was like, you know what? I kind of have the itch to play Mass Effect now, uh, and I'm playing Mass Effect. And the only achievements I have left to do on uh, Legendary Edition Mass Effect are um, complete the last quest. And complete the game. <laughs> nice, nice, uh, nice. That's it. That's it. All I need to do. And then I've got the the one hundred percent, the platinum trophy. Um, but but also, I was looking at the other things that I had had, and I've got um, almost, let's say, almost six platinum trophies in a row. <laughs> Go on. It's weird. So in like summer, June. C- C- Summer June when I was going to make this, some predictions this, this year, this year, this year. Go on, go on, go on, make your predictions. Do do the do the thing. Do the thing. I don't know if it's this year. I don't know, but I I will say an easy platinum trophy. The Telltale games are usually okay. very good for platinum trophies. I mean, I, I, in a row, I have other platinum trophies, and they are mostly the Telltale games. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but I mean, if you get them for just beating the game, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's six in a row. There's uh, six six in a row. One of them isn't. One's at fifty five percent. So it's, I'm not going to count. It's sort of whatever, but. The last six games that I've played, um, five of them are at one hundred percent. So in June, uh, the visual novel Digimon Survive came out. Of course, yeah. And I, uh, Digimon Survive. I played through that game four times. You played through it four times. How long is it? Uh, I would say I'm not sure. Like thirty hours, maybe. I think the first, hours. first one... You played 120 hours of no, a no, Digimon no, no, no. visual novel. No, 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 no. The first playthrough is like 30 hours, and then you skip all of the text because it's basically the same story. Okay, that's again, more again. acceptable. I'm still a bit concerned about it. But so that's I, more I've skipped most of the visual novel bit of the visual novel. Uh, in... <laughs> um, it has four four different routes uh, in, as well, so the story does change up bits and pieces. And I, I, don't, I also don't even like that game. At the end of all, or after everything said and done, I didn't enjoy the game, <laughs> but I've one hundred percented it because I got to platinum. Basically, see, there's one game I've got a platinum for that I don't mm. that I didn't love. Mm. Mm, it's two. Mm. I'll talk about them after, but so carrying you first. Uh, the next game I started playing also came out in the summer. Uh, I've, I've got fifty five percent on that, so it's not not platinum. Uh, I played through Soul Hackers two. Um, the JRPG by Atlas, and I probably would have continued playing it. I don't think I would have got hundred percent on that uh, if it wasn't for the fact that the game is so slow to move. Basically, that's sure. the one problem with the game. Um, then, just recently in October, I think I uh, I bought the Spyro Reignited trilogy. Mm, mm. Did you get all three? I got all three. Let's go! Yes. <laughs> I got all three of the Spyro through uh, Reignited trilogy to 100% uh, platinum in uh, on PlayStation trophies, but I, I guess this is something that I because I, I it's something we c- could can maybe talk about because I know Louis's favorite is uh, is Spyro three. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Spyro three. 
Order, oh. order them. Oh, hang on, before we go any further, mm. order them for me. Okay. Okay. Before, best right, worst. So, so if I if I was to, to give no no no, this... no no preamble. No no just no, no. Or, I want I want I want order. I want an order that I can argue with. So I, no, I wanted to, to give you the order that I think that I was would have given them in when I was a, a kid. Like, okay. So All right, fair enough. Fair I, enough. As fair a kid, enough, I think enough. that I thought Spyro Two was the better game, and then Spyro One. Um, and then I hadn't played Spyro 3 as a kid other than the skateboarding level, uh, which I was excited for after that. Always um, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Always exciting. Well, that was the demo on uh, Crash... Uh, I can't remember the, the Crash Party game. Yeah, but Crash Bash. Crash Bash, yeah. The demo for... on, Cra on the, the secret demo was for Spyro 3, and it was the skateboarding. Yeah. The first skateboarding bit. I remember, I remember. Um, now... I think Spyro 1 is better than Spyro 2. And I think Spyro 3 is the worst one of the three. Louis, discuss. I'm angry. <laughs> I am There's angry. a rage. Oh, no. There's a rage. Out of interest, what order would you put them in, Louis? Mm. Yeah. Uh, 3, 2, 1. Oh, really? What about you, Charlie? I'd go three, one, two. I think two's the worst. Oh my god, it's such a good story. See, so, no, so I, that's I don't kind like of two. What I like about I like the, I think two has a a like the best narrative. I think two has the best story and the best use of its like characters and and like that sort of thing. But I also kind of found um, it was a bit sh like it, it was a bit repetitive at times and a bit like feel like the areas. game. I feel like the game spends too much time trying to tutorialize everything yeah. to you. Yeah, I think that's fair as well. In Spyro 2. I also think that it's um I, I, was, I was what was I was thinking? I was thinking that the uh in Spyro 1, all the worlds, all the hub worlds feel really, really distinct. And that's really mm. good. In Spyro 2, they feel a lot less distinct, but there's also only three hub worlds. Um and they are it, they still feel like a part of the same world. Um, so it's it's fine. Spyro three, I feel like I couldn't tell you what any of the hub worlds are at all. <laughs> couldn't tell you any of. I just like yeah. There's the bit where there's water for some reason. That's awful. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about the levels of two. I just really don't enjoy the general. I I this. I don't know. I don't. I don't. Mm. I don't know what it is about the levels in two I don't like. Mm. I can't I've never been able to put my finger entirely on it. Mm. I just think they're too sort of open and I can see that. I don't know. I don't I, know. No, I can it... see that. I can see them being quite because it's basically you're given like a checklist of stuff. Instead of like Inspiro One, where you're just like go, just go. Just do whatever, right? Inspiro two, you're just like, here's a checklist of stuff. Do that checklist. And and I feel like that design philosophy moves into three as well. Like here's a checklist of stuff, go do it. Spiral yep. one feels much more like ah, uh, go to the end of the, like it's a, here's a level. You're playing a you're playing a level in a platformer. I think it helps that the, the soundtrack in three is better. I don't know. I like the soundtrack. I do like the soundtrack in two. I can't act like I don't. I I have uh, this I have this real weird. There there are definitely some. There are definitely some in Spyro three. I can't name names because I don't know the names. Uh, there's the ice level that I really liked. It actually really yeah, reminded yeah. me of um, a Donkey Kong Country uh, level, and I was like, "Oh, this sounds really cool! This sounds really cool!" But for for the most part, I found the the soundtrack in three also not as interesting because the soundtrack in one and two, it's like it's basically a fucking prog rock album. Like Spyro One is yeah. basically like a Rush album, right? <laughs> it's mm. absurd, and Spyro Two does the same sort of thing, um, but with more more thematic stuff in it so like there's the um is it colossus that's one of my fa that was one of my favorite levels as a kid um and i still i, I played it through and i was like oh this is a fun level it it it, it is really good mm. but i, I the, love the, the, uh, soundtrack. the opening cutscene where the yeti eats that man yes that's also a thing that i really <laughs> missed in spyro 3 uh there was no um opening preamble to the levels like I yeah know, i liked I like the opening. I think the closing ones I wasn't super into in two, but I do yeah, like the opening yeah. cutscene things. Yeah, like that. Here's the world. Here's establishing the world. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that the the closing ones were a bit whatever, 
Uh, but I loved jumping into a world, it establishing itself through its opening cutscene, its culture, and and the way the other characters like interact with each other. I found that really, really cool. Um, additionally, one of my biggest things with Spyro is, and I feel like this is a thing with Sonic as well, and you know it's not good if I'm comparing Spyro to Sonic. Wow. The more friends that they give Spyro, the more I wish they wouldn't give friends to Spyro. Oh, yeah, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Like, okay, what, what do you mean exactly? Like, Hunter's annoying in the second game, right? But he's also shit on by every other character in that game, and it's fine. Then he becomes, like, the second main character. And I'm like, oh, he's awful. And then all of the little friends that Spyro gets along the way that you can also play as, like, Sheila the Kangaroo and the Yeti dude. like uh, Sergeant Bird's a banger, what are you talking about? Like, uh, also, yeah. I, I, oh, I, I saw your tweet, by the way, and I, I was like, I was going to interact with it because, like, I was... <laughs> I was like, how no, no, are you? No, no. How are you struggling to control these characters? How how do you? I just how, found them what? cumbersome. It wasn't that I was struggling to control them. Like they're e they're not they're easy enough to control. I just found them un the only fun one, to control. <clears throat> the only one that I thought was like maybe was a bit annoying was probably the the monkey Agent Nine. Yeah, I, that was the I, only, I think yeah, the I think it's, it's, it's better in the one. reignited, but in the originals, I think Agent. I, I feel like Agent Nine's, Nine's like a a a. a He's he's essentially um, a tech demo for Ratchet and Clank. Sergeant Bird is like hated, it, it, is Sergeant the Bird. is the best 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 controllable character. I hated playing as Sergeant Bird, it's spe specifically when you had to carry the rockets around and stuff as well, because then he just doesn't he doesn't move properly. Um, but all, all of them also felt well, really he's, slow. He's a fucking rocket, Adam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's carrying a rocket, but all of them felt that's, slow that's an, and unfun. To that's move. another thing. About Sergeant Bird, we're getting real into the weeds here. Sergeant and I'm here Bird, for it. The thing is about Sergeant Bird is unlike mm. Agent Nine, where I think he's better in the remake than he is in the original. Mm. I think Sergeant Bird is better in the original than he is in the remake. Right, There's right, something right. I, I, I don't quite know what it is, mm. but I remember struggling with the remake version of Sergeant Bird mm -hmm. and then going back and trying the original. And there is just a slight tweak, and I don't know what it is, uh, yeah. but I, I, yeah. Well, it, it, it started from. I, I, so when I play Spyro games, I typically try and play them fast. Don't ask why. I feel like I just charge everywhere. You're a Sonic. You're a Sonic kid, is you know. I I enjoy I enjoy just charging everywhere, and so I I, I also just charge everywhere. Yeah, I, I also charge just everywhere. charge everywhere. So I, I do that. I do that IRL. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel that. like a, I feel like a lot of the player base is uh, probably yeah. in that same boat. But so then the second you play as uh, Sheila, who's the first character you get, it's like you can't. Yeah. Spy Spyro's movement speed is. Uh, Sheila's movement speed is so much slower than Spyro's, and she also doesn't have any um, like attack variety. She can just kick things, and I'm like, okay, this is this is unfun, but I'll, I'll manage it for for like now. And then you get Sergeant Bird, which I don't think I, I didn't think he moved particularly well. Uh, then you get the Yeti, who is the slowest, but albeit for me, I think he's the best one because he's slightly more satisfying because uh, you can just walk around smashing things in the face <laughs> yeah, but you <laughs> can do that with sheila as well no 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 she doesn't feel as powerful as as the dude who just breaks those diamond crates like in in one shot he, ju he just feels so powerful mm. yeah mm. honestly i'll tell you i'll tell you what and this is and and like they they already they already had us good they already had us uh by the next, even when we were when we were kids, because like it feels good when you smash open a chest yeah. and like a lot of gems come out of it. It's like mm, yes, dopamine. Yeah, it's please, that, it's that more, end, more more endorphin in it brain, is. please. But the worst thing is his levels are shit. Because I remember you saying you were saying on Twitter the the, the but, beating up the boxing game that you have to do. Oh, it should be illegal. It's, like, it's it should awful. it should be illegal. Shit. Apparently, apparently they fixed it for Reignited Trilogy, and apparently it's actually. Works really well. I didn't play it in no, Reach so I, I, I refused. Uh, I was like, I I broke a controller uh, playing this as a kid. Uh, <laughs> I am not. I'm I'm not subjecting this. I, I found yet. it fine. I, I found it even, boring. Even when I, but it was fine. even when I went back like a, a few years ago to you know let's let's play it again. That's 100 percent mm. the game, but like fully 100 percent the game. Mm. So that means every single skill point as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So and then there's a skill point for. 
doing the 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 boxing match against the Yeti mm. in uh, in less th- in only two out of the three rounds. Oh, that does sound quite hard, actually. Yeah, that sounds really difficult. Yeah, even in, even in reignited, it, it, really, just sounds difficult. Only two out of the three rounds. Yep. Uh, I hated it. <laughs> I fucking hated yeah. it. I wanted to. Oh my god, it was. But the, there's I... only one level where the Yeti can actually do anything fun. Like the other level that I'm thinking about with him is where you've got to do whack a mole, and and if you whack something mm. that's not a mole, the whole game resets and just goes nah. Not how to do that. Like, yeah, that and I, would, I remember, I remember the, uh, I remember the whack a mole. It's, it's just uh, annoying. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's just annoying, and and that sort of brings me to my biggest criticism of Spyro Three is I felt like, you know, in Spyro Two you've got to do little mini game things like just randomly. Spyro Three, there's loads of little mini game things. Most of the levels towards the back half of the game are filled with little mini game things and almost all of them are unfun and almost all of them repeat themselves at least twice like you do one of them then it goes hold on go do it again we've got another egg for you it's over there just do it again i'm like oh. yeah they do they do tend to repeat oh, it, just, it just really it got to the point where i was just sat there like i don't want to play the game anymore because I knew what was gonna happen like, every single time. I got a, I got a little mini game, and I did, I did it, and I was like, "Well, that was not fun." And it'll be like, "Whoa, well, well, there's another egg thing going you, you on." You need to do it again, but this time it's harder and more annoying. And you're like, oh, "But why? Why can't I just be Spyro? Why can't I just like charge around and set things on fire and have a fun time?" Also, also, also. Who I... the fuck decided that Sparks was the only person who didn't have a regular voice? <laughs> Everybody else, Sheila the Kangaroo's like, "Good eye there, Spyro. I like kicking things." And I will like... say, I will say that's a pro- one of the problems I have with the Reignited is like, I think, I think it's a problem for all three Spyro games, but I think it's sure. especially egregious in the third. Awesome. I think they lose some of their character. Mm. I think like some of the new voices they have for people are just sort of bland and nothing key i think some of the music like agent nine for example agent nine's lab song in the original is so good Mm. and then in the in the sequel in the sorry in the remakes it just doesn't it just doesn't it's nowhere near as punchy at all and i think that's just a really good way of summing up all three i think with the remakes is they do lose a little bit i'll say their edge they're obviously not edgy edge lord games that's not what i'm trying to say but, but yeah. like they do just lose that little bit of something that makes them a bit more characterful than like like you say here comes sheila she's australian <laughs> yeah well worst part yeah. is is that like i think the the joke is because of like the the place that she lives it, it's like australia but they forgot a syllable Australia. so it, so it turns to austria austria Oh, is that the sure? I didn't. I didn't really. I don't. I wasn't really paying that much attention there. Maybe. Yeah, um, because like she she lives in an Alp with with, with some billy goats, three billy yeah. goats that are clearly like Austrian. Yeah, true, true, true. Fair. That's that's a fair point. Um, but yeah, I felt. Uh, I thought that bit was uh mildly funny. Yeah, I was, I, I was playing through Spyro One, and I felt like okay, this is cool, but I felt like it went on a little bit too long, but that was fine. I was playing Spyro 2, and I was like, you know what, I'm enjoying Spyro 2, but I feel like they've run out of ideas somewhere towards the middle. Um, but it's good. It's good fun. Um, and then I played Spyro 3, and I was just like, why are you wrestling control of Spyro away from me? Why are you forcing me to play as so many other characters that I just couldn't give a fuck about? I think, if anything, I think both that and Crash are great examples of why 3 is like the maximum amount of games you should ever have in a series mm. like because there is just that sort of like because crash 3 although well crash 3 I mean, is the better one place, right? you do have to face coco oh i yeah i agree i but i think spyro 2 is the best uh, spyro 3 is the better oh, one as well okay. but what i would say is like there's just a lot of stuff in there that's yeah, not yeah. necessarily needed you know mm. you're looking at you're looking at oh now crash is on a motorbike now coco's on a tiger ski, now tiger, yeah. now there's on a jet ski now crash is swimming and it's like 
there's a lot of bits and pieces in that game mm. that just aren't really necessary and could be less the, the detract but... from the overall experience i would say like the yeah. thing that makes spyro so fun is dashing around and setting bad guys on fire and collecting gem the satisfying gem hits you know when you charge through a lot of gems and you hear the sparks just drink sort of noise mm -hmm. um uh, like there's, can, I, can there's, I get a quick reload on that sound please? it was like two sounds it was drink I don't. Sure, yeah. It was like half the sparks going, and then half of the the gem getting get the gem get noise. The gem get yeah yeah yeah. Gem get noise. Uh, like that was the both of them together. Love um, that. Thank like, you. <laughs> yeah, that that like Spyro one feels it feels fun. It feels fun to play. Right. It feels fun to move. I think that's that's like the base of of three D platformers is it needs to feel fun to move around, and the further in. I got to Spyro, the less fun it was for me to just move. To the point where they then went, nah, fuck it, we're taking your movement away. Mm. Or also, and I, I feel like, and I, I was talking to someone and they were, they were getting very pissed off at the Sparks levels. Um, <laughs> I didn't realise what they were. It was like, oh, it's a twin stick shooter, but they've only got one stick. Yeah. yeah. Why have they done this? <laughs> why did they? Why? <laughs> It's, yeah, again, it's just that, I think it's that thing of, um, I've spoken to you before about, I think it was, was it, was it moving on from Crash? No, I think it was Ted, I think it was Ted Price who was talking about it, the mm. Insomniac founder, who was talking about moving from Spyro to Ratchet, um, Spyro to Ratchet, and just saying, yeah, he couldn't hold anything. Mm. It made you limited, and that idea of like, well, if you did want to do literally anything else, you would have to make a completely new character well, to yeah. do it. And that's what they did um, in Spyro 3, I guess, right? Yeah, and I think it's just a, an inherent limitation with a character who literally mm. can't hold stuff. Sure. Um, especially when, and this is something I've been thinking about recently, is especially in a, in a situation like that where you're able to, back in the day, you're able to turn around games a hell of a lot quicker yeah. than you can now. Yeah. Like now, Games like yes. I saw a tweet from um, I don't remember it was Jason Schreier, someone like that, someone like that. being yeah. like if I've, if someone's making a if someone's making a, a big budget game and they just started making it now, it probably would have to PS6. be for the PS6. Yeah, and it's like we got three Spyro games in basically what three four years. Mm. We got three Crash games in the same amount of time. We got flipping well more if you include Crash Team Racing and Crash Bash. I know Crash Bash was developed by someone else, but the first yeah, four yeah. at least all put by an old dog. You got. I was thinking about the GTA games. Think about that. You got three in a gen. I mean, yeah. I mean, we got three in a gen. There was like there was like eighteen months between two of them. I think. Yeah. And it's and then you're talking so like GTA Five is what like ten years down the line now. Yeah, and obviously GTA Five has a longer shelf life for other reasons than yeah. that. But you're still talking about making so. It's not like well, they also made Red Dead, and that's it. So technically, yeah. you're thinking of two really, and that was. It's kind of insane when you think about it in those mm. terms. If you're in a if you're in a period where you're iterating so quickly, you're making like three Spyro games in a row like that and stuff. You probably are just going to want to do literally anything else, sure, and at that point, sure. you would have to. You know, you mm. would have to be like, right, I'm going to have to invent a character who can swing a club yeah or can shoot a character missiles can shoot. or whatever here's a character that can jump because yeah. spyro can't jump instead of like I, I think i felt like in two they fixed that issue with the superpowers yeah there is something there i don't know I, do you know what i just don't, I just don't like two <laughs> fair enough fair enough fair enough i i know I, 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 I don't think you're wrong though i don't think you're wrong I, I, I just I had there were so many frustrations I had with Spyro Three, and and unfortunately it was the one I was looking forward to so much because Louis had spoken so highly of it, and Louis was like, "Oh, it's my favorite game in the series," and this, that, that, and the other, and I was like, "You know, I'd never played Spyro Three before. I am excited to play Spyro Three, uh, and and yeah, fair play, I did play all three of them back to back, and yeah, fair play, I did play all three of them back to back to one hundred percent completion, um, which probably detracts from my experience somewhat, right, but. The fact that I got to Spyro 3 and I was just having, like, I was just not having fun with it because the base gameplay, because the game wasn't allowing me to play the game. It wasn't allowing me to play Spyro. It was forcing me to play Ratchet and Clank and 2D, whatever 
the kangaroo levels are and whatever sergeant but it was forcing me to play so many different games i don't know i think it was i think that was probably the best part of the game because like it's good to have like sort of for like fresh mini games especially in a kid's game i would agree if i'd enjoyed any of them <laughs> you know like if it was if there, if there were like five different uh play styles and i enjoyed all five of those different play styles i would agree um but i i didn't enjoy any of those different play styles like, at all um so that's kind of why i i, I got uh, it was even with the skateboarding i felt like when i was a kid when i played the skateboarding level uh that the skateboarding was far more um i don't know like flexible than it was but it was so rigid when i played it i was just like, oh yeah this is <laughs> this is far less fun than i remembered having with the the skateboarding level i don't know also hunter I Ugh. Hunt, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's a kid's character, and he's like sure. Jobbing. Sure. It just is what it is. I don't know. I I really like three, and for some reason, the levels of two just put me off. I think mm. I think there's a lot of things to like about two, but it's just I think it's two probably, excels. I, I, I can in... understand. I think a lot of a, a lot of people would agree with you. To be fair, I, I don't, don't think know. they would put three last, mm. but I think they would say if you if you were to have the discussion of two versus three, I think yeah, there are a lot that's of people fair. That that's say fair. two. I think I genuinely think I, I I probably do like two more than I don't know. As a kid, I liked two more than one because I liked the I was a kid and I liked the sort of Saturday morning cartoon aesthetic that it was. Right, I liked the the idea that it had a little story. Also, the villain is great. Ripto is fantastic. Like, there's no villain that's anywhere near on the level of Ripto. From like, like Nasty Nork is just kind of there. And um, there's the... He is ugly. <laughs> he's kind ugly. of funny. He's whatever, right? That like... does it. Yeah, he's kind of funny, but he's whatever. But And then the, the hippo sorceress thing in Spyro 3 basically sorceress. doesn't have a personality whatsoever. And the the, the, the bad guy that you're interrupting with is... Uh, I, I don't remember the the little fawn girl who fall, becomes Hunter's girlfriend. Alora. Is it Alora? I thought Alora was the good guy from no, the, two. The fawn, the fawn's in two. The in three, it's what is she? Um, I don't know what she is. The little sorceress's what's... assistant girl. Uh, yeah, the, the, a... the, the the rabbit woman. Yeah, yeah. Her. the girl that ends up getting with Hunter. Like she's not really a bad guy, and I think it's very obvious oh, wait, that she's it. not a bad guy from the start. And then the actual bad guy just basically isn't doesn't have a personality. So, like, in terms of villains, Ripto is just far and ahead. Like, the best that that series has so in the first three games, I think. And, like, the characterization of, of Spyro. Maybe not Spyro, but, like, the people around Spyro feels feels better in two, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think if you, if you like Spyro for its gameplay and not its story, uh, you're probably going to feel like two is maybe a little bit of a letdown and I can sort of understand why that would be the case for you, Charlie. Just I just don't like his levels as much. It's just the levels. I don't know. I run the levels. I don't know how I and I don't really know why they just have like this sort of it like falls, it falls off hard after the first hub world, I think. That's fair. I think that's fair. Like absolutely it, fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of what I felt as well. Like I felt like it the, ran out of ideas first, quite quickly. The first hub world is like you just get a lot of belters. And then all of a sudden, it's like um, mm. all of a sudden you, you go to the next hub world, and it's just there's yeah, some no, good stuff good. into there's some there's some good stuff in the second hub world, but I think the hub world itself uh, is on, probably the best. My headset's uh, dying. Ah, shit, no worries. Um, yeah, I think the hub world itself is probably best in the second hub world. Oh, there we go. We're, we're, we're back. Right. I can hear you both again. Wonderful. Yeah, I think the hub world again. I pre is, I, pref I prefer the third hub world, but the third hub world. Oh, no, are we talking about the worlds in specifically in Spyro? I, I prefer the third hub. I prefer the hub worlds in three, but I can understand really? what you're saying. Really? No, I I I again. I well, I agree because I didn't think there was anything in time. them. Like I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed walking around the hub worlds of one because they're themed, right? They're the most of them are themed very well. Some of them are themed oddly. Um, but most of them are themed very well in Spyro 1, I think. Spyro 2, the hub worlds are themed 
basically exactly the same, but I found there was I felt like there was more to sort of explore, I guess. I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking of that one I I feel like they were so cramped. The whole world's in three. I felt like there was so much just in in each other's like there's no world to like just roam. You know, there's no like Yeah, but I don't stuff. I don't but there's nothing there though. But I kind of like that. I kind of like the open mm. space bit of the hub world, right? Like in Mario 64, for example, like the hub world's massive. I know the it's one hub world, but the hub world's massive. And you can do so many just random things in it. Um, it would feel so much worse if it was split into like five hub worlds. And oh, here's the stairs section and here's like 10 levels and they're all on top of each other. You know, I, 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 that's, I, I, that's kind of how I feel towards Spyro 3's hub world design. I don't know. I I feel like I'm probably I, I I at a disadvantage, especially considering I didn't play it as a kid, uh. So I don't have any nostalgia for it at all. But I I felt very disappointed by Spyro Three. No, I think that's fair. Like I said, I think there are a lot of people who would agree with you in saying mm. if you were to put two and three directly against each other, I know a lot of people would say two is better. Sure, sure, sure. I would respectfully disagree, but I know a lot of people who yeah. would agree. Who would who would agree? Mm. I think. I, maybe as well i think about it more in terms of the originals where like at least in the reignited you've got a lot of like like visually there's just a lot more mm. going on mm. so like if i think back to um well, yeah, the, the the dragons aren't like three polygons well if i if i think back to the hob worlds for example in two mm. like and i think back to um i'm trying to remember what the second one's called the autumn autumn one, I glade i think it's called autumn something i don't remember what it is but it's let's yeah. just say autumn glade for the sake of argument sure. um like the rolling hills are a green flat well, texture I, I, sure. that sort of just exists sure. for eternity you're just sort of going across whereas in reignited you've got the grass you've got the wind blowing you've got the trees i, th I think about, it feels a lot nicer but when i think about it and someone um someone posted a, a tweet of of the original of autumn glade specifically and i don't think of like the hills in autumn glade i think of the um the, the little pool that exists just outside the front, the, the entrance to that area. And I think about, like, the big sort of castle that you see in front of you that you can sort of glide around and find little alleyways and entrances and stuff, you know? I find that super interesting. Like, there's architecture in, in Spyro 2's design, right? Whereas I, 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 couldn't tell, I, I couldn't tell you anything about... Like, there's the one hub world in Spyro, 2, uh, Spyro 3, I remember... But I remember it because it's all underwater and I fucking hated it. Yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? Evening Lake. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, because they're all they're morning, evening, Eve afternoon. Yes, yeah, spring, morning, sunrise, midnight. midday, <clears throat> yeah. garden, evening lake, evening, and midnight, yeah. something. They're, they're, they're those themed, aren't they? That's yeah. it. But I, 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 I yeah. I quite, I mean, Again, mate, I I just like the the hot worlds more, but I think that's fair. I I understand what you're saying. To be fair, I don't think that's unfair. Mm. I think I think the first one, Inspire Three Sunrise, is like okay. Like I think about yeah. I think about moments in it, but I'm not super fast. I uh, think yeah. Yeah. midday is a bit better, but I would agree. I like Evening Lake, even though it's all underwater. I quite like that, and I really like. I don't know why I really like. I've just always really liked Midnight Mountain. You know what's really cool is that there's the egg in the whale. Yeah, yes. the egg in the whale's pretty fun. Yeah, you're not wrong. The egg in the whale's pretty fun. I like the egg. But I will say, the hub world music often, in 2 is great. I often hate getting that egg, because once you get that egg, you can't go inside the whale anymore. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You can't. Yeah, I I do. Do, the hub world music in three, uh, 2 is really good, because it's, it's all sort of atmospheric. It's different. It's yeah, atmospheric okay. and, and, and environmental and it. interesting, yeah. Instead of it being a fucking prog rock album. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here for that. I'm here you're, for talking to the, you're talking to the guy who for two and a half years was an accountant and basically for two and a half years just listened to nothing but Jethro Tull while I was in the accountancy <laughs> office. So Jethro Tull could have composed Spyro 1. I know he didn't. I know it was a different person of a different band. I can't remember his bloody name. A different uh, person of a different band. Oh, uh, I know, I know his name. He was from the Jam. 
No, it's not from the. He's it's from the police. It's the drama from the police. Stuart Copeland. Yeah, yeah Stuart Copeland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Copeland. That's the one. Was it not somebody? Was it not somebody else? One, two, and three. One, one, two, and three, and four. I mean... All Stuart Copeland. Hmm. Yeah, Stuart Copeland drum of the police. Because there's just a lot of drums in it, which is, there is again a lot of drums in it, and you're a drummer, which is have, yeah, which is probably why I'm so here for it. I would like the the like I say, I think that's one of my biggest disappointments with the Reignited trilogy is just mm. they just lessen those drums, man. They just don't have it in there. Like they have drums in there, but they're not driving. Yeah, like yeah, in yeah. the first, in the original three, they just got some driving drums in there, and I'm very here for it. But again, I am a drummer, so that would make sense. Yeah. But I am very here for it. I appreciate it a lot. I appreciate the soundtrack. I appreciate the soundtrack in all three. I do find three. I like different memorable. things about. I like different things about all of them. To be fair, there's none. Yeah. Of, none of the soundtracks I don't like. I like all of them. Sure, yeah, I, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I agree. Yeah, he also did Enter the Dragonfly as well. Yeah, he did. He did all of them. Yeah. He did all four. Did the four of them. And the soundtrack in four is probably the best thing about it. To be fair, so. Fair, fair. Well, they should have brought. It's good that they brought him back and realized that Spyro's music is kind of iconic, right? In a way, there's no other game that sounds like Spyro. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. I agree. It's. Uh... I think you could accuse some of the songs of being a bit samey, but apart from that, yeah, for, especially yeah, yeah. the first one. But but like, yeah. Well, I mean, they they do just reuse a couple of them. Well, that's true. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, there's no other game that sounds like that. Um. Have you seen the um? Someone uploaded onto YouTube like the bit of him explaining making the process of making those songs no. from like a you know you used to get like um I don't know if it must have been from a DVD or something but maybe not a, a DVD, DVD it's probably too early for that stuff, yeah. but like you know like used to get stuff on the front it was for a PlayStation magazine basically uh, yeah they will and some PlayStation they will and they uploaded it but I think DVDs are too early for that seeing as it's PS One but there's like a bit of him going through the process of making sounds for the first making songs for the first game. And just like, I don't know, it's just something kind of what he just bangs out a tune in like 30 seconds on the fucking <laughs> spot. And you're like, yeah, that went in. I, like it. <laughs> I don't know. I really like those. I really like the soundtracks in those games. No, that's no. that's a big thing for no, me no. with the third, with the remake is just how they just lessened the I impact remember, of them. I think they're so good. I remember, I think we talked about it once after a podcast episode and you sent me, I think it must have been Agent Nine's Lab because you, you were kind of like uh, peeved about it. Yes, and that sounds like, like oh, me. Does this sound? Uh, tell tell me what you think. You don't know the song, but tell me what you think about the two different songs and, and which one's better. And I think I agreed with you. I just can't remember what the. <laughs> it was probably it was. it was probably Agent Nine's Lab because I think that one's one of the most egregious. Mm. I remember before. Um... I can't remember what the new. I can't even remember what the new one sounds like. Oh. Imagine the old one, but not as good. <laughs> Imagine the old one, but with less bam. Um, it has less bam think... in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I remember before the Reignited trilogy came out. Um, I think it was either the either upload because I was like super hyped for it, obviously, because I love the first three Spyro games, and like uh, the re the Crash Insane trilogy has just come out and was really good, uh, apart from some elements of it, but whatever. That's life. Um, yeah. And I think they must have uploaded like gameplay footage of. Um, what level? It was one of the levels from the first game. I'm trying to remember which one from the first world. Mm. The dark one. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, and, like um, that, yeah. and I think they must have uploaded gameplay footage from that. Either that or or it might have been in the trailer. They used the song from it. Mm. And they're just being an intense discussion. And you know what I'm like? I ignore YouTube comments entirely. Sure, I couldn't give less of crap most of the time. But there was an intense discussion over... Ooh, okay right we need to have a discussion about this because <laughs> it just wasn't it just didn't it just didn't hit the same um okay yeah but agent nine's lab is the is the best. is the big one i think it was the, the one best, you were yeah. kind of yeah i think buzz's dungeon is another one where i was just like it doesn't hit the same because mm. like Get buzz's it, dungeon in the original just slaps too much also it's... do you know what i found kind of upsetting as an adult i probably would have loved this if i played this remake as a kid mm. but the second boss fight of Spyro 3, the, the the original, was the hardest thing to do in the entire game. Yeah. 
The second boss fight, and they made it a bit easier. Which one's the second the boss fight? I can't remember. Uh, Spike, I think the guy's called the the guy with the the big dude with the gun. With the gun, yeah. Uh, sure. he's like a big dude. He's like a big. He's like a big kind. Of, I'm trying to remember what he looks like in the reignite. He's like a they're big all dude. Big dude. So the boss white. Is he's like sort of white. He stands on two legs. He has a gun. Yeah. He's like he a minute, runs... He's like it's almost like a minotaur. Yeah, yeah, I think I sort of vaguely, I, I sort of vaguely remember. He's he's not the first one, which is the weird frog mutant thing that rolls yeah. at you. Buzz. He's not the th he's not the third one who flies in the air, and he's obviously not a sorceress. Scorch. Yeah. I remember. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, he sort of runs about. He, you get like power ups. You get the power ups come back. Oh for that one. shit! No, yeah, you gotta shoot him. But you gotta yeah, yeah, shoot yeah. him because he's yeah. You have to shoot him. And he tries to grab the same power ups as you, and then he uses his yeah, gun to use the power ups. No, I do remember it now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do get it. I do get it. I remember very before we move on from Spyro. I remember mm. very vividly talking specifically about Buzz's dungeon and the soundtrack to that. I went to on I can't remember. It was must it must mean twenty. It was whenever the riots were happening around London um, after the killing of Mark Dargan. Um, was his name Mark Dargan? I think it was anyway. Um, and we were away at the time. Um, we, me, my mum, her partner, and stuff. We were away in Wales, mm. uh, of all places. It's the only time I've been to Wales in my life, and we were away in Wales. Um, and I remember the riots happening, mm. and it just being like chaos, and seeing like on the TV being like, "Crap, I go there like every day. Oh my god, I go there, and it's just like riots in the streets of London just being torn apart." And thinking, what are the chances of us being away exactly when this happens? <laughs> and like not being there for any of it and like messaging my friends. We're in like the middle of nowhere, Wales. And so Wales, where I was like trying to text people, mm. my phone being like, what's going on? And then being like, crap, it's all going to hell or whatever. Um, but I remember really vividly because I had the Spyro 3 soundtrack downloaded on my iPod yeah. and I get really intensely travel sick. Okay. And the only and I would like sit in the back of the car as we were driving through like rural Wales to get places, and I would have my headphones on and I would just listen to Buzz's Dungeon song on loop because it's such a banger. And it was like the only thing that stopped me from feeling super travel sick. Also about that trip, notable for video games, uh, we went through Port Talbot, which I was very excited to be because it was a level in Resistance Three where you go to Port Talbot, and it was just... I, 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 if you live there, I'm sorry. If you live in Port, Port Talbot, I'm sorry. Yeah, it just it didn't seem like the vibiest place in the world, you know what I mean? Sure. It didn't seem like the sort of place where um, things happen. Man, uh, yeah, I, I hope nobody who lives there is listening to this. Ah, they're probably fine with it. I, I'll be real. I don't live in that great a place. All I'm saying is they'd probably agree. <laughs> if someone said that about where I'd live, I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Our, uh... My friend, my my friend, uh, when I was when I was working at the, uh, when I was working as an accountant, um, my friend, I met someone who became like a really good friend of mine who was from Stevenage, um, and the first time he came to my house, which for context is on a council estate, mm. he went, Charlie, I'm not going there. <laughs> and i went why and he went i i just i don't trust it no and i was like look i know everyone who might get you here i know and you'll be fine and he's like no i'm not doing it I and then mean, like as he walked through the lights turned off in the estate for some reason he got mad freaked out i honestly bro if someone's like i don't like where i live but if someone just said that about my home i would stop being friends with that person Really? I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. Like, I'll be like, "Oh, you, you're really gonna slag off my home, like, literally where I live, that much." Not your house, though. If someone said about your house, maybe, but not. Yeah, I mean, like your house is shit, mate. If someone, yeah, if someone walked into my house and went, "Raw, bro, you live in a shithole," and I'd be like, "You want to start, bro? I'll have a swing at you." But you like, wanna... if you're outside, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, you know. What there are you people do? come in and say, oh, Blackburn shit. I live, I live in Blackburn. We've, got, we've had someone in the house this week. Um, my uh, friend's wife has uh, imposed upon us a divorced 40-year-old woman. Um, <laughs> that, is a wild, you just, you, that was a wild set of sentences you've just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't ask why. And she's sort of like sat here and we're, we're chatting and stuff. And she's like, so what do you do in, in, in Blackburn? And we're like, um... 
don't know. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> so what do you what do you do for fun? I'm like, I, I guess it's kind of. I mean, we went out. We went out. Uh, there, there wasn't. There, there was nothing there. I remember we went into to that one pub and there were just five old people. It was a night. It was. I don't know what you'd class the bee's knees as, but it's a, sort of like a pub cross dance floor. And there's like five just old men in there sitting around. Nobody else. Always. This like, is about nine. It, between nine and eleven o'clock at night. I don't remember which one it is. Um, but there's just nobody in there. And this is like the busiest pub in Blackburn. So yeah, we just sat there like, yeah, and Blackburn, Blackburn is shit all, isn't it really? It is a bit shit. <laughs> just having to explain it to this woman who's like, do you do anything? <laughs> like, hey, no. you take pride in your shithole, you know what I mean? So she's 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 uh, gone to Manchester for the night, so she'll <laughs> she'll realize that there's something better there. Um, I think she wanted to uh, she recently divorced. I think she wanted to go out and get drunk, and I was just like, sure, oh, you can't really do that in Blackburn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fair. That's fair. Nope, you really can't. I mean, you can, but you need to go to the Weatherspoons, and then once you've been to the Weatherspoons, everything else is closed. So. May as well stay in the Weatherspoons. I feel like the Weatherspoons closes first. Uh, I mean, it probably closes earlier than some pubs, but yeah, I don't know. It was. Uh, it, it's not worth. I, I, I like Blab. I don't. I think if someone came up to me and said Blackburn's a shit, I'd be like, yeah. You know, <laughs> like I just, I just agree. <laughs> so yeah, there's nothing much here. Yeah, I don't see any problem with chatting shit about where you live, you know. Okay. Like whatever it is, what it is. Like I'm not gonna go into someone's house and tell them. No, that's the, that's awful. That's that's just rude. If she'd come in and she'd be like, "Fucking hell, it's shit in here, isn't it?" It's like, hold yeah. on, hold on a minute. Like, oh, hold on. The door, the, the door is there, love. Exactly. Um, you'd just be like, "Hold on a minute, fucking hell, mate." <laughs> You've come into my house. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's not right. But but the city like, I'm not going to say it doesn't have its faults yeah. now. But come on, now. the walls might be falling off. But Jesus Christ, it's still got a roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know. Man. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. I'm going to make the noises. I'm going to make the, the old stretchy dad noises now. Sure. I'm too old to be sat at a desk for an hour. <laughs> I'm too old to be sat down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm too, I need to be in bed all times. <laughs> That's it. I'm too old to to breathe. I'm too for old to be alive. Minutes. I need to be not alive. <sighs> yeah. yeah I don't, I, it, it, we were talking about platformers and and stuff. We've had our big game talk. That's, that's, that's all that matters. But we've spoken a lot about video games, and I feel sad about it. <sighs> oh, I guess talk about more video games. I was playing Mass Effect, as I've said. I used to hate Mass Effect 1's combat. I used to thought it was boring. I can see why. For the first time in my entire history of playing the original Mass Effect, I've chosen a class that isn't Soldier. Yeah, no, I realized that as well at some point. When I used to play Aspect when I was a kid, and I was like, oh, until... a soldier, right? I'm just gonna and click soldier. I... <laughs> up until up until you know, um, the remakes, yeah. I would always pick soldier, and now I didn't, and I was like, oh, yeah, wait, <laughs> oh, oh, I can actually, oh, they... oh, you know, oh, you yeah. know what happens when you pick soldier, and all the all the the, the enemies just run at you at once. And yeah, they've yeah, got yeah. like mountains of health, and you can't do anything about it. Well, how about you pick a class that can just go? Hold on a minute, you stop. You I'll so fall <laughs> over. You I'll go say, in the air. Uh, the best thing that ever happened to me, in a sense, with games, is playing Zenyatta in Overwatch. Because mm -hmm. like, I play, when the when the winter event in Overwatch came out, the first ever winter event that Overwatch did, um, that Christmas it came out. Mm. And they they added that like three v three team deathmatch mode, and for some reason I just picked up playing Zenyatta, and I don't know why. I just think he was super worked in that mode for some reason. I don't yeah. know. And I got super, and I was like, oh, okay. That was the first time I would pick like a magey heal support mm. character, basically. Mm. 
and like since then i've gone mad into meiji support characters <laughs> i don't i've done everything else off now i'm i'm here for it and so then when the mass effect re, uh, i was gonna say the reignited trilogy the mass mm. effect uh whatever Legendary it's called came edition, out. Yeah. that's the word i knew there was some nonsense word in there um and i picked i can't even remember which one i picked i was just like oh Man, you can do things. <laughs> oh, look at this. Well, I, I was like, oh, because I, I, I banged on it with my friend. I was like, it's the first time playing. I go, oh, you should play Lee Shepard. Not, not Commander Shepard. You're Lee Shepard. So it's you. And yeah, he was yeah. like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll play I'll play as me or whatever. And then I, I, I just picked up and started playing it. I was like, well, considering I was so adamant that he should just play as himself, I will play as myself. And then I was clicking it. I was like choosing a class. And I was just like, yeah, but I'd be a fucking shit soldier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. my hand-eye coordination's fucked i wouldn't yeah. be i'd be terrible it, even even with military training with the amount of military training i'd have to do to be good with a gun i'd still be shit with a gun right mm -hmm. <laughs> so what in these classes would would work for me and then those are called sentinel uh which is like it says like protect like you, you can heal your squad members and yeah. use your magic powers to you be like be protective and and defensive and stuff like that. and i was like you know what that sounds a bit more like something that if i was in this world i would be more you know a support healer defensive barrier kind of thing right instead of a uh, guns blazing dude so i'll pick that and i just sat there like oh my god stasis is yeah. so good yeah stasis is your lift oh i love using lift oh he's behind cover doesn't matter. Lift. Oh, <laughs> he's he's a thing. I think, can't do shit. In you know, in two, mm. when you do the um, when you do the loyalty missions, you could get like a power from them. Oh yeah. yeah when yeah. you did it, and I remember obviously this was pro, just playing soldier times, and like um, I would uh, when you do Miranda's mission, you could get the slam one oh, yeah. the one where you lift them up into the air and it just slams them back down yeah. and honestly i had the time of my life doing that <laughs> and i should have picked up on that back then i should have gone ah yeah. that's oh, something shit. i should be aware of but no didn't didn't at all <laughs> um <laughs> it's a play mass effect one and going oh actually shit <laughs> i love just like, using lift and just seeing geth just return to their home planet <laughs> just like ah oh, you've gone You've flown so high that you you just finished into the thinner. You're just gone. You're just gone. Enjoy the air. Yeah, it's it's just fun. it's just fun. I'm like, oh, I'm gelling with the uh with with the combat of Mass Effect One. That's surprising. <laughs> I just thought it was shit. It's, it's yeah, not... I could, I, no, it's still not the greatest combat yeah. we're ever gonna yeah, play yeah, in our life. No, absolutely but, not. You know, but it's still it's fun to use the powers. Or it's fun to use the biotics, I think, more than than the uh, the engineering powers. The engineering powers are, are kind of dull, kind of like just throw shield damage at someone or whatever. Whereas the biotic powers are all like, ah, let's just do fuckery. It's just a good time. Surprising how that game's actually all right, isn't it? Uh, uh, shocking. I hope one day I'll be able to go back and play Dragon Age Origins and be like, oh, the, the game does work on console. I just I wasn't will, playing it right. I reckon, no. But what I will say <laughs> is, what I will say is I tried to play Dragon Age Origins back in the day and really yeah. struggled. And then I started playing it last year at some point and I didn't play that long, but I was instantly way more into it than I was previously. What did you do? I just think I was ready. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Well, I, I just I think it was one of those things where, understand. like, no, I know, but I just think it was one of those things where, like, mm. now I was more into the idea of doing something than other. Because you know what I'm like? It's like yeah. when we've spoken about Final Fantasy 14, and I'm just yeah. like, the idea of MMOs in general, where I just feel like I'm clicking and not really doing anything. But one day think, you'll be like, oh. <laughs> maybe. I, I think it was, but I just think it was that just exploration of different yeah. ideas other than. I just want to run up and whack something. Mm, I get that, I get that, I get that. I just want to sit here and click on something. Although the Dragon Age Origins console combat is, is bad. Mm. <laughs> it's not... Yeah. It doesn't work. Um, I mean, to be fair, Dragon Age Origins in general, there's a mod oh. which mods out all combat, so... Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh. So I wouldn't... Um, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the greatest. How does your uh, How does your girlfriend think about your uh, your opinions on Dragon Age Origins? 
she hates the combat more than I do. Oh, does she? I thought that was one oh, of her she, favorite she, games. She, she, no, she loves Dragon Age Origins. Yeah. The door's it. She will not do any of the combat. I at hate all. Dragon Age Origins so much. Yeah, the combat stuff. She loves the game, but she this... despises the combat. She's the reason <laughs> I know the flipping mod exists. I think she won't play do... it without it. It makes you do so much nothing. I Yeah, I kind of agree with that as well. I, I prefer Dragon Age 2. I, I feel Dragon like Age. a lot of Dragon Age people would disagree this with you. Is, but this I is the I... most controversial opinion. I prefer Honestly, Dragon Age 2. Honestly, I think... I've held this uh, opinion for quite some time now, I think. I think Bioware are, are great storytellers, mm. but they're just bad at video games. <laughs> they're just bad at making video games. I just don't like the games mm. that, that they make. Like, I like, like I think the stories that they write, like, once I learned about them, I'm like, oh my god, this is, this is really good. I would have... I would have enjoyed the story, but I just can't bring myself to play this game. <laughs> well, I think that was kind of... I, I, I kind of do agree with you with... um, Because it's Dragon Age Inquisition, which is the the one that people... you know, it, That's the critically well-received one, right? Bro, I yeah. tried. I tried so hard yeah. with that game. I tried. I really tried. Yeah. It's just so boring. You know, when it's not being good, it's being boring. Yeah, it's what I mean. It's just like... I, well, the thing is, I, I played the first hour of it. I played the open, and I'm like, oh my god, I could, I, I'm really, really yeah, vibing this. This is great. This is fucking cool. Oh, I'm enjoying this. And then, all, and then as soon as that ends, it's like fucking <laughs> Walk three through hours. a forest for it's 12 like, hours, and you're like, oh. Yeah, it's, oh. I literally, I didn't want to play anymore. It's, it genuinely, that's how I felt with, with um, Dragon Age Inquisition when I played it. I played it through once, so I'm, you know, things may be different now. But I played it. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I finished the game. I love the story in that game. But every time it forced me into a new open world area, I was just like, "Oh fuck off! Can we, can we just not do this? Can I just do the story bit?" Uh, and that's why Dragon Age Two is my favorite of the three Dragon Age games so far. Because as we were talking about uh, Batman: Arkham Asylum, it is concentrated within a small area and focused and therefore I find it more interesting even if the gameplay is not as fun and not as polished Dragon Age, oh. Dragon Age 2 is my Arkham Asylum Fair. <laughs> I, I just don't like open world games guys uh, yeah well they, what's they, the they, Skyrim <laughs> they're kind of sh uh, I don't know they're, they're not the best. My friend my friend from work, he's played a lot of Assassin's Creed Origins later recently. Oranges, yes. And he's really enjoying it. Good. And he keeps he keeps showing it to me. I'm like, oh, 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 Lou, you should get this game. Oh, you should play this game. You should get this game. And then I look at it while he's playing. It's like, oh, yeah, look at all of all of this. And I'm like, mate, that just looks like a fucking chore. What do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't... Yeah. Like, I look at op like open world like quests and collectibles out like outside of a a Western RPG, and I'm like, mate, oh. that just looks like a fucking chore. Just all if, if it's not if it's not a game specifically made for for stuff like that, like mm. you know Skyrim and Fallout, then it's like yeah. I even felt like it's weird in terms like so like The Witcher Three is massive, right? It's a massive open world, but I I haven't played The Witcher Three, but I've seen people play The Witcher Three. And I just sit there and look at it and go, my God, you know, this game would be 100% better if they just dropped the open world aspect and made it oh. linear. You know, I think the worst part, or what for me might be the the, the worst part of uh, of uh, those, those kind of open world games have like a load of side quests, mm. is that most of the side quests are, when you touch the NPC, go, they're always... Go very far away, talk <laughs> to this NPC, and come then back. come back. And then come back. <laughs> that's most of the. Yeah. That's most of those side quests. Yeah. And th th I think that's maybe where the problem is, because all of the side quests are like the. I don't know. It, I, it's I like the, it's like the game nothing. pretends to have content when it's just like. Yeah. When it's just you, you basically it's 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 the gameplay equivalent of tidying up. <laughs> to be fair, I do kind of um, work to open world games 
as like tidying up. I I I, I get that. Like that, it kind. I agree that I feel like when I'm playing Assassin's Creed Two, I'm just tidying up. You know, I feel I feel like Assassin's Creed Two is the, notoriously the worst for it, it because I played, um, because sorry, go on. Um, also with Assassin's Creed Two, I remember uh, watching a a Yahtzee Let's Drown Out video, which I thought mm. was pretty good. And so for his series, he plays like very boring stuff or he does very boring stuff in games whilst talking to his friend in like a podcast style format. Mm. And I always, I always, honestly, I thought the idea was really good. I'm, I'm, I'm upset that they stopped it. It was really, it was a really good format. Yeah. Uh, so what they did in Assassin's Creed 2 is like, well, I've beaten the main game. Now, That's and then he opens the, the menu. Right? Feathers. So, so, now, so now what we're going to do is get all of that it was just all, every single collectible on the map and the map was just filled with like collectibles yeah, and like it's... that's what they did for like <laughs> like oh, for over an hour is it like a th- is it a thousand feathers or is it a hundred feathers all i know is it's excruciating it's a lot if, it, it, it's, if it's if it's a hundred then that's that's like bearable i feel like a hundred is probably bearable a thousand that's fucking that's ludicrous that is insane that is not fun for it's, anybody it's... nobody in their right mind would think would, would would do that and think oh man this is really fun compelling gameplay me yeah. getting these it, 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 it is a hundred feathers it's a hundred feathers it's not okay thank like, fuck i was like if you have to get a thousand of something that is insane yeah, yeah. i mean I still think it's so egregious. Like that was one of the worst things about that game, it in was, my opinion. Was. was I didn't I didn't even bother trying to collect those feathers because there was just too many of them. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I, uh, it's just a boring task, and I'm fine with doing boring tasks again. You're talking to someone who actively hopes tro- gets trophies sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like I I can put up with some boring tasks, but that was just like nah. The worst one was um, shards in Infamous One. Oh my god, mm. that was a nightmare. I don't know how many shards there are in Infamous One, but they were the worst thing in the world to try and find. Um, and also, it didn't help that I went through the entire map, right? And they're like, you have a mini map, and then you have obviously the main map, and there's just these shards that are everywhere that you collect, like the feathers in Assassin's Creed, and you can ping you get like an ability later on in the game where you can ping the mini map and if if there's like a shard near you it will show you on the mini map and i went through the entire island i combed it with and there's hundreds of these shards by the way and i combed the entire map for an inch of its life went for it all and i was like this is beautiful i'm gonna finally do it it's gonna be amazing and i had missed one shard and i don't know where it was on the map and I couldn't find it for the life of me. I'd gone through every single inch. I felt like pinging. I could not find it. I then, and then, and I was so desperate at that point. I was just in like Stockholm syndrome mode where I was just like, I am finding this shard. I don't care anymore. I got a map from IGN's guides page at the time <laughs> and it had where all the shards were. And I checked off every single one and I still couldn't find it. I don't oh, know where it is. And, I've ne- and I, at that point, I was just like, no, bugger that. It's similar to, there's, there's more, there's more than a yeah. hundred. I can tell you that much. There's oh, a lot. Yeah. I, horrendous i just i hate i, I hate collecting things um, see i don't i don't mind collecting things but it's when like games are built for it, it. I'm okay with it. you yeah. know i think yeah. you can build a game and build systems to make collecting things a lot yeah. easier and more calm yeah. and then i'm okay with it yeah. but it's stuff like that where it's just a pain in the ass yeah. no not even that for me sometimes sometimes it's just like Sometimes if I just really enjoy the game enough when I play, like, after playing the main server, I'll be like, you know, I'll just play a bit more. I'll just Did you do get the all Baron the... Zaya stones? I'll just, I'll, just get all the, I'll just get all the shit. Did you, did you do, the, do all the Baron Zaya stones in uh, Skyrim? Uh, yes, I did. I did. Oh, the, oh, you, you, oh, sorry, you were saying it a bit weird. Oh, was it? Sorry. Yeah, no, you said it right. I think the the Baron the it's stones ba- of Baron Zaya. Yeah, Baron Zaya, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that... Well, the... I don't. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. I did. I did get them all. Fair enough. I can't remember how many there are of them, but there are a lot of those. Uh, the, the first time I got them, twenty four, was... right? The first time I got them was probably on console, and I think it was just purely by accident. 
I mean, if you play enough of the game, you will eventually. I mean, there, there, was, there was some I intentionally went for, like on that playthrough, but most of them I feel like I just got like um, on on uh, unintentionally. Yeah, you just yeah, because you'll just find, you will find them eventually. They're they're all there are twenty four. There are only twenty four. They're just scattered yeah. across Skyrim, which is fucking massive. What what else is uh? What else is annoying? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So, um, oh yeah. I was gonna say when I played Skyrim on on PC, mm. or or rather even later in console years as well, I downloaded a mod. Yeah, there's a mod for the Baron's Eye Stones now. Yeah, it just adds map markers. Yeah, yeah. So you don't even have to find them anymore. You just they're just there on your map, which is super useful. If I feel like the reward you get for the, <laughs> for the end of doing that is so lackluster as well. Yeah, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, it's, just, it's just how it is. But bro, I I I went through hell. I went through literal <laughs> hell to get these. Through hell for these. I mean, we, I was... mean do, me, do me a favor. Look up how many shards there are in Infamous One quickly. Go on, Infamous One shards. Infamous One. I know it's definitely more than a hundred. I'm intrigued now. Uh, um, blast shards. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are over eight hundred and fifty-nine known blast shards. Really? In just infamous one, it can't be that many, surely. That's the infamous wiki. I'm sure there's an. It, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just specifically oh, okay. so, infamous okay. one because that'll include well, other ones in other thing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's got it's got a minute. Oh, sorry, so three hundred and fifty were found in Empire City. 305 in New Marais and 204 yeah. in Seattle. Yeah, you can, can you tell why I didn't do many other ones because there's 350 in the first game. Yeah. Even though they are getting less, they're only getting less by like. Now imagine imagine getting 349 and not being able to find the last one. Jesus. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, that, that makes me sound like I would. Uh... Maybe want to go on a murderous rampage. <laughs> it does. It does. Ah, oh, and speaking of murderous rampages, it's time for us to go on one and leave the. Place. I mean, is that how where you want to word it? Yeah. All right. Just before we end, then, can I read you the? Can I read you the first line of a article I just saw on Twitter? Got go for it. Also, just just to just to really date the podcast, Manchester mm. City are currently losing two 0 to Southampton. <laughs> uh, anyway, right? It, how? I don't know. How is the best team in the league losing to the worst? It's incredible, isn't it? I don't know how it's happening. I mean, I know Manchester City have got a rotated team. We, we, we drew. I remember we. I remember we drew against them, and I was like, "How?" Yeah, we lost two 0 to City, and I felt as lucky. Anyway, mm. um, this is coming from GuinnessWorldRecords.com. Okay. Um, Elon Musk has officially broken the world record for the largest loss of personal fortune in history. Wow. <laughs> what an L. Wow. He has lost approximately $182 billion since November 2021. Ooh. 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 That's a lot of money. Well, that's what he gets for <laughs> for being like, Haha, I'm going to buy Twitter for $44 billion. Because me saying that will be funny and not have any, uh, and not and not hold it have any consequences in any in any meaningful way. Wow, that's absurd. Is he a self-made billionaire or is he just a billionaire or is he uh, diamond mines, he... right, or emerald mines? I can't remember which one. Yeah, yeah, he's not. He's not self-made. I mean, obviously, obviously, his parents weren't as rich as he were, but he's not self-made. No. Yeah. But yeah, amazing. I just I just saw that and just thought, you know, we can end oh, on a high. End on a high note. According to Forbes, Musk's net worth dropped from a peak of three hundred and twenty billion dollars in twenty twenty one to one hundred and thirty six uh, one hundred and thirty eight billion dollars as of January twenty twenty three, largely due to the poor performance of Tesla stock. He surpasses the previous record of fifty eight point six billion dollars set by Japanese tech investor. A Japanese name in 2001. It's just <laughs> incredible, you know? What, yeah. an, what an outrageous L, you know? It's... What an outrageous L. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. God, right. That's that then. Let's go. Bye.
Bye.